Hello, this is Wolfram Müller from Speed for Projects talking. Welcome to the how to for the critical chain in an Excel. Um, it's all about how to do planning and execution management according to critical chain. So um, yeah, let's have fun in the next minutes. I will show you through the Excel and all the features. Before that, uh, just a few words uh, about me. You can read it yourself. Uh, I just want to talk a little about the history of the stuff. Um, as you see here in the middle, I did something around 30 agile and critical chain transformations in the last years. And it's, it's always like this. Uh, you start planning how to do all the stuff and how to do the change. Um, but then you need something to really have on top of the overview. So um, it's, it's very easy and very normal to do a project plan, but at that moment you don't have a critical chain tool at hand because um, you will get it in the process and in the middle somehow. So I was always in the need of having a small tool where I can put down a project plan and show the customers how it works to do it in a critical chain. And three years ago, I, I promised to a customer, oh, it's easy, I can program it in, in Excel. Um, yes, uh, you, you believe it, it was not like this, but over the last two years, a real full-blown uh, critical chain tool uh, was developed. And I think uh, today, something around 100 uh, users are around the world. So uh, you can regard the Excel as more or less stable. Um, and that's the history. So it was just out of the need for managing the changes. Um, the part one, it's a planning of course, and uh, you will recognize most of the features. It's like a standard project management tool. It's adding work pages, packages, tasks called define dependencies, estimations, update the plan and check uh, whether everything fits. Okay, um, and in real world you have holidays milestones and this uh, interesting stuff, the critical chain. Um, that's the first part and I will show you a little about the buffer and, and what this is all about. Um, and then the second part will be execution management. So um, I think it's time to show the Excel itself. Maybe you already have the Excel or after the video you can uh, uh, I show you the link where you can click on and then you can uh, request the Excel. It's free, of course. So uh, we are currently in the version 1.13. Uh, it's a long history since then. Um, and you see it's for free. It's a Creative Commons license. So you can use it whenever and for whatever you want. Um, but the most interesting part is, of course, doing the planning. OK, it looks a little like Excel because it's Excel. Um, and it, it goes like this. So you have a project, of course, and this is this is my first project. No, it's not the first project. It's a critical shape project. So, and as you see, and as you are used in typical MS project manner, here's a list of work packages. Um, I typically really name the work packages um, based on the deliveries. Um, in this case, uh, I don't have an idea here right now, but it's really normally like this. You have a work package and then you have a next one. Um, what's important um, is here the yellow um, uh, cells uh, are typically some cells where you have to enter some data. Uh, one thing is of course um, the start of the project. I start here at the 1st of October. And you already see that there are a few dates here. It's a start date, it's an end date. And there are two different kinds, original ones and current ones. So one big part of critical chain is to have two project plans, an original one and a current one. And the match between these two or the difference between these two, that's the interesting part of it. Um, yeah, I don't have to tell you much more about this. So, this is a first plan to work packages. Uh, what do you what What do you need is of course um, the dependency information. 
The first work package start always with a predecessor and the predecessor is zero because this is the first work package. And you see already here the task IDs um, and you can use these task IDs to define the predecessor. The second work package has of course the predecessor, um, the one before. Um, and what's missing for doing a plan, it's a plan duration. Um, the first work package may be 6 days and the second one 12. And that's very important to recognize this Excel is calculating everything in working days. So one week or five days because on Saturday and Sunday typically you do not work. So um, that's that's mainly all. Um, if you entered uh, all the work packages and dependencies, you can click on this button and you already see all the, the cells with this uh, red triangle on the upper right side. They have a description um, and the description explains what's in the cell um, and what the cell is doing. In this case, it's updating the plan and okay, it's a little Excel magic and after five seconds, uh, the update is done and you can see the project plan. The project plan is on the right side and it's simply as, as every project plan, it's a, like a Gantt diagram. So the project starts on the 1st of October. It's like six, the first working work package or task is six working days long. One, two, and you see the Thursday in Germany, at least in Germany, it's a bank holiday. It's marked as red. Red means uh, you, you are not working on this day. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, you see already that the Excel is recognizing all bank holidays um, and it's calculating the start and the end appropriate. And then you see the next working package is starting right after and it's 12 days and it ends on the Friday, the 25th of October. And you see here the 25th of October, everything's right. So that's, that was a very, very simple uh, project plan, but you can, of course, uh, do a little more elaborate ones. Um, to, typically, the first work package is something like um, doing conceptual work. Um, that is necessary to do the planning and all the stuff. And then you have typically a very long work package maybe, oh, very often programming something, huh? programming stuff. It's a, it's a longer work package. And in parallel, it's also very often, you have to do some documentation or test planning or something like that. But um, I see, I, I think doing documentation is always a good idea. And having all this, um, if you have the programs, you have the program and the documentation, you can do the end-to-end -end test. And to end tests, that's it. Okay, you can use, of course, different ideas. You're free um, how to choose it. So, um, but you can do documentation by different person, so we can work in parallel. So documentation can start also when the conceptual work is done, but the end-to-end -end test needs both. So and you already see how it's written down, it's comma separated, that's it. Um, six days for conceptual work, 12 days uh, for programming, for documentation, maybe need half of the time, six days, oh, you're a fast writer, three days, and for doing the tests, um, again, six days. So, and, and that's not more. Huh? So you can update the plan and you will see immediately um, that uh, the Excel is simply just adding the formulas to calculate um, the start and end dates. And if we are looking to the right side, we should see the Gantt diagram. You see the conceptual work the programming work, 
and the three days for documentation. And what you al already see in critical chain, it's always latest possible start. So um, documentation is done at the end. And what you also see in this case, uh, both prerequisites are finished on Friday, but you can start with the end tests on Monday. So the Excel completely recognizes uh, holidays and weekends um, and that's it. Okay, uh, that's a plan. Uh, maybe one thing. Um, hmm. You can also use alphanumericals for task ideas. Um, and this is the end of project party. That's very important, but you should do it simply um, when everything is done. And maybe you already recognize there's a type. There are different types of work packages. And this sounds like a milestone. And there's also one difference to other uh, project management tools. Milestones in critical chain have typically a duration. And if you do not have the file right now, um, in, the, in the description of YouTube, you will see um, a link to a website uh, where you find also uh, a little more description and a download link, or you, you can simply send a mail to me um, and I will send to you the Excel. Um, and maybe if you are interested, um, you can of course follow the Speed for Projects channel. And in the, in the channel you will find um, a, a video list um, about the Smart Pipeliner. And this is also an Excel um, that allows you to do really uh, portfolio optimization, find your bottleneck team, uh, stagger your projects and uh, find the projects that are best for the business. So uh, the Speed for Projects channel is full of interesting videos and tools. Uh, click around um, yeah, and follow. And if uh, you want the Excel mail or link, click. The only thing I expect is if you're using it and if you are getting in trouble, ask me for help because I'm very, very interested in having even more fever curves from different projects all over the world. Thank you for this, for your time. I hope it helped you to really use the CCPM in an Excel in the full functionality. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.